My wife confessed she was seeing someone just before our agreed divorce. Now I'm broken and sure how to protect my kids from this pain. I've been married 16 and a half years with my wife 21. We have had ups and downs. When I met her, she was teeth nicest, kindest woman I'd ever met. I literally told her she was going to be my wife two minutes after meeting her. So we have two kids that are my entire world. After our second child, she started to get distant, depressed, and different. I thought she was struggling with depression. She refused to look into it. She wanted couples counseling, but this was during the recession, and I was working four jobs in a side business just to barely make it another month. I couldn't afford another $50 a week, especially when she wouldn't talk to me. I asked her what was wrong and she'd always say I don't know, but she'd have good weeks and bad weeks. Sometimes she'd be great, others she'd be mean and disrespectful. Once we were back on our feet, I begged her to go to counseling with me. She eventually said okay, but I don't think she liked it. We went to a woman that I think she thought was going to just tell us that I was doing everything wrong and needed to do better. She didn't. At all. At first she told her the same thing I did. I can't work with I don't know. So my wife said she needed more help around the house. Cool. This was 2015. Since then I've worked three jobs. Vacuum the house, empty the dishwasher and sink daily, help with the laundry, take out the trash, and straighten up the house. Things were good for a bit. Then she got mean again. This time she started snapping on my daughter a lot. Finally I pulled her aside and told her that I would never divorce her. I would try to work and make our marriage better for as long as it took. But I think because my daughter is so much like me she was taking her venom out on her. And I can't allow that. So if she wanted a divorce that's what we'd do. The next day she said she wanted to try and make it work. To her for a few years things were good. She even went to a doctor and got prescribed an antidepressant but insisted on the lowest dose. Fast forward to 2020. Went right back to the meanness and disrespect, but worse. There was total disdain in her voice whenever she spoke to me, and a look of disgust whenever I showed up somewhere. It hurt. Sex was never a problem with us, and we both seemed to really enjoy each other, but when Shed get in these moods, Shed withhold. Still, I never cheated, even though as a bartender I had many, many offers. At one point my sister told me she just assumed I had been cheating because she knew my wife wasn't putting out for so long. I told her Lee never do that, so now we are here. Last month after a wedding we were at a hotel, and I'll pine to fool around when she told me flat out. I don't want you. I think we should get divorced. We agreed to do it but hold off till after the holidays for the kids. She fell asleep ten minutes later. I laid in bed with tears pouring down my face for three hours, but I thought it was going to be the most pain I ever felt. Then Terry's today. A week ago she had to go to a party for my daughter's softball team. At midnight she wasn't home so I checked our Life 360 app and she was at an Applebee's. So weird but I thought she met her friend for a drink after. Thing is she was there till 1 but they closed at 12. I asked where she went and she said some bar with the people from the party. Never said Applebee's which was odd. Two days later she said her boss told her she had to put a password on her phone because of work emails. Now I was suspicious. Today her mom called and asked if I could help her husband move a rug. So I went to help. She had. So I decided to try something. My wife has a bad habit of needing to talk on the phone when she drives, so I called her. Um, she was short and said she had to go because she was talking to her mom, who was standing right in front of me. Okay, I went home. When she got there, I asked how her mom was and if she told her I had seen her today. She said she hadn't and asked where I saw her. I said at her house. When I called you, her face dropped. She tried some half-assed excuses but finally admitted she had been seeing someone. For a few months so before we agreed to divorce, I was shell-shocked. Ten minutes later she was acting like nothing happened. I don't know if it was to not tip off the kids or because she just don't care that she crushed me but I suspect the latter. I couldn't even talk to anyone about it as we've kept it secret that we agreed to divorce so nobody slipped to my kids. And we had to go to a Christmas village tonight so we weary all out all night. My kids knew something was wrong with me but just thought I was in a bad mood. My son literally said you sound hurt. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. The prospect of divorce was already stressful enough. And I've lost 20 pounds in the past month. Without even trying just figuring out how we can do this. Without me losing my house. I've spent the last 15 years paying off her $10,000 in credit card debt. $15,000 in student loans. And $45,000 car. Now I'm gonna owe her at least $40,000 for the house. It's going to be painful but I think I can do it. I was finally starting to mentally prepare myself for the divorce, and then this betrayal just hit me like a ton of bricks. In the last month she's hurt me more than I ever thought possible. I don't even recognize the woman I married anymore. I don't even know what to do. My daughter's gonna be heartbroken when we tell her we're splitting up, but I don't even know if I should tell her about this, because I don't want her hating her mom. I'm lost, confused, stressed beyond belief and heartbroken, and I look at my wife and she looks like she couldn't care less. Thank you for listening. 
I don't even know if what I wrote is allowed or too much off topic, but either way, I thank you because it was very therapeutic to just type it out and get it off my chest. Even if I'm typing this with more tears streaming down my face. Thank you guys. Update one three month update from day okay. So it's been three months from my initial post and it's been quite a trip. Please excuse the length of this post. I got a lot of advice on my initial post. Look at my submission history to see the original story. But I decided to follow my gut on how to proceed, it's going okay. Still not done yet, as expected considering it's only been a few months. Apparently that's their sole way of communicating, most likely because Hez married with three kids, is also a doctor and rich. That one was a real punch in the gut to a guy working three jobs to survive. On Christmas I found out she had told her whole family we were divorcing, along with my sister and my cousin's wives. But meanwhile I had still told nobody out of fear of it getting back to my kids before the holidays were over. Um, her mom was not happy, thought she was making the biggest mistake of her life. Same with my sister and her best friend, she didn't care. She also left out the part about her cheating of course. I couldn't talk to her mom at Christmas because she was already starting to cry and I didn't want to tip off my kids, so I set it up to talk to her a few days later. The next day my wife and I sat down and talked, I told her I didn't want her seeing the guy again till everything was done. It was disrespectful, and if she wanted him to divorce his friends, she doesn't treat a friend like that, she agreed. Then we discussed how we'd split things up. I think I did okay. No alimony. No child support. 5050 custody. We both supply clothes for the kids. Everything else gets split equally. In keeping the house, I have to pay her $43,000 in equity. In the end, she walked with about $40,000. She owes her dad $10,000, an 800 credit score, and zero debt. All thanks to me. When I finally went to speak to her mom, I found out that when she found out we were going to talk, she came clean to her. She originally lied about cheating when her mom asked, then told her the truth after. So my mill was furious, really ripped into her, then cried to me that she was scared I was going to cut her out of my life, which I assured her would never happen. Fast forward to mid-January. Now I'm down 40 pounds. I'm going to the gym every day to relieve stress. Now we have to tell my kids. I told her I wouldn't lie to my kids, but I wasn't going to just doubt her either. I said if they asked I'd try to steer the conversation a different way. She said she felt the same way. The thing is, I knew this wouldn't fly with my daughter. She's like a 14-year-old clone of me. She can spot bullshit a mile away. And that's what happened. Before we even said anything, my daughter asked if we were getting divorced when we sat them down. And my wife said yes and my kids lost it. Lots of crying. I saw them crying and I started crying. <laughs> then my wife made a big mistake. She said, listen, we both want this. And that's when my daughter let her have it with everything she had. She screamed, that's bullshit. My father would never want this, you want this. Look at him, he's crying. I've never seen him cry in my life. This is you. Then she asked if my wife was cheating on me. My wife tried to change the subject, but she wasn't having it. She grilled her while screaming, tell me the truth. Over and over until my wife fessed up. But after that, it was like I could see her brain moving. She started calling out every red flag over and over and made my wife confess to it. In three minutes, she got more out of her than I did in a month. Afterwards, I spoke to my kids alone. My son is 12 and just needed reassurance that things were going to be okay and would change as little as possible. So although now I can see Hess dreading when things finally finish, my daughter told me she was crying for me, not her, because of how hurt I had to be. I comforted her and made her feel better. Then she asked me to make her a promise, because I've never broken a promise to my kids. She asked me to promise if when this is all over, if my wife loses her new house, and needs a place to stay for a while I would let her stay here. All this shit going on she could have asked for anything and she looked out for her mom. I couldn't say no. When she talked to her mom she asked her to promise to stop talking to the guy. She broke that promise after two weeks. Since then she started sneaking around again and seeing him for half hour stints at places like Target. I caught her again and again we had a blowout. And again she agreed to stop seeing him even though she still talks to him. Apparently she has feelings for him now. Hey, like I said, she can't bullshit my daughter, so eventually she'll know she broke that promise. There's no need for me to tell her. Right now I'm in the process of refinancing my house, and she's looking for a house of her own. She's got her rich aunt co-signing for her, so hopefully she'll find something soon. Also, one other thing, and I know this one is going to be controversial on this sub. Yes, I have proof, and yes, I know everything about this guy now, but I have decided not to tell his wife. I'm not proud to say it, but my motives are completely selfish and self-serving. The fact is, if I tell her, they get divorced. And then, when my wife leaves, she has a ready-made relationship waiting for her. A rich guy who even after divorce will still be rich, taking her on expensive dates and nice vacations, helping her with her bills, etc. while I struggle. As much as I want to hurt this guy, I want to hurt her more. So when she leaves, her sneaking around is over, but his isn't. 
They won't be able to go out on dates, so you'll get to see how much of a side piece she really is. They'll only be able to meet at her house and hell have to leave as soon as Hez. Uh, he won't be giving her any money because it could tip off his wife. And now that she is feeling for him, she'll see if Hez gonna leave his wife and leave her family for her. I'm betting he won't. But if he does, fine. But Hez gonna have to be the one to have the balls to do it. I'm not gonna do his dirty work for him. That's what happened with her rich aunt. She fucked a married man. The wife found out and left, and she moved right in. Went from being a broke single mom to a millionaire. That might happen with my wife, but I'm not gonna help make it happen. Thanks for reading. I still read this sub all the time, and it's been extremely therapeutic. And please try to be nice. I know everyone won't agree with everything in this post. Just please try to understand that every situation is different. Thank you. Update 2. It's been 16 months since I found out. Here's an update so if you look at my post history, you'll see what happened. Caught my wife cheating after almost 17 years of marriage. So the divorce finalized this past August. I promised my kids their lives would change as little as possible. And I've kept that promise. In August, we finalized the divorce. She was looking for houses while living here. She got out bid 16 times. I found a house around the corner for me that she loved. I spoke to the owner and he basically let her have it without taking any other bids. She never would have gotten the house without me, which makes me feel good as my kids are now never more than 30 seconds away from me. Our divorce agreement worked out great for me. No alimony. No child support. 5050 custody. To kept the house and paid her the equity was able to refee before interest rates skyrocketed. For the next few months, I basically refurnished my house after splitting the furniture. Changed some stuff around, changed pictures, focused on that and my kids. Stayed positive. Kept going to the gym and working. It's been good. I've been friendly with her throughout, which put my kids at ease and helped them get used to everything. She even came to Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve at my sister's. People think I'm crazy. But I let go of the ill will and helped my kids celebrate the holidays normally. And that makes me happy. Financially, I've been doing great. While I'm not sure but I think she's struggling, she was never the best at budgeting money. We are supposed to split everything the kids need outside of food and clothes but I wind up paying for more than I should, which I don't mind because I know it's going to my kids. In December I met a beautiful, wonderful woman. She lives about an hour away and is divorced with two kids. Because of the custody schedule we only get to see each other a few times a month but she's amazing and really makes me happy. I don't know what my ex's dating life is like. I don't know if she still sees the guy or not. I know she's hooked up with a couple other people, but I don't ask about it. I know one night she went out with a guy three weeks after she moved out and she got jumped by four girls and had the shit beat out of her, which I'm not gonna lie, made me laugh. As far as the guy she was cheating on me with, well, we have some mutual friends that I've told. This one couple I'm friends with saw him with his family at a function and started having a conversation in front of them where they mentioned my name and that I had found out my wife was cheating on me. They said I knew who the guy was but hadn't done anything yet. Then they started saying stuff like, man, if he decides to go after him, they won't find that guy's body for 50 years and shit like that. Just laughing and watching him sweat without letting on they knew it was him. I don't think my ex ever told him I knew about the affair, so that was probably a nice surprise for him. I'm sure three run into him eventually, not sure how that will play out, but I'm not going out and seeking it. So basically 16 months after D-Day, I've got a new girlfriend, a great relationship with my kids, a happy work life. I'm in great shape physically and I'm doing great financially. I don't think it could have worked out for me any better. So if anyone going through it now needs some advice, here's what I would say. Stay positive. Don't let the resentment and negative feelings take control of your life. If you don't have a lot of money, try to sit down and work out a deal with your spouse without lawyers. This way you actually have some money to walk away with. If you have kids, try to maintain an amicable relationship with your spouse. I know how hard this is, but you are doing it for your children, not for them. Exercise is a great way to distress. Find a gym and start going. It'll help your mental health as well as your physical health. I remember that every situation is different. Find the path that works best for your situation. When they are gone, remember they are gone. They aren't coming back to you. And if they do, it's probably not for your best interest. The trust is gone forever. So move on and find someone that deserves you. If you're not the kind of person that meets people in the world often, try a dating app like Bumble. They work. I know this update isn't as satisfying as some in this sub would like, but it really worked out well for me and my kids, and that's all I really wanted. So yay, I'm a lot happier now than I was after that first post. And I think that's the goal of this sub in the end. So thanks for all the kind words and support. It helped a lot. Now on to the next story. Story 2. I caught my Gvief doing this with her app at a friend's wedding, so I exposed her and now she's a wreck. My wife, 32 female, has always been my biggest supporter, especially when it comes to my DJing career. It's actually how we first met back in 2011 at a school event where I was starting out as a DJ in our town. The moment we started talking, we just clicked. 
We had so much in common, from our interest to our taste in music and favorite bands. At first, we decided to hang out as friends, but before long, we knew there was something more between us, and we started dating. Fast forward to 2013, we got engaged, and to celebrate, we took a trip together. We often reminisce about that trip where we listened to the entire Third Eye Blind catalog and sang along to all the songs. That year, we tied the knot and got married. Throughout our marriage, we developed this special tradition of trying to see our favorite band, Third Eye Blind, as often as possible. We made it a point to attend their concerts whenever they were on tour. And over the course of our nine-year marriage, we managed to catch them nine times. It's been a fantastic journey filled with shared passions and great memories. Last night was supposed to be our 10th time seeing our favorite band. Can you believe it? We've been married for 10 years as well, and our anniversary is just around the corner in November. I had this amazing plan all set up for us. We'd go to the concert, stay at a nice hotel, and have a super romantic night together. And to top it all off, I got her a beautiful custom necklace made of gold with her name on it, and her favorite lyrics engraved. I'd been saving my entire salary for the past year just for this special gift, and I knew she would absolutely adore it. So, on Friday night, the big day arrived, the day of the concert in our 10th anniversary celebration. When I got back home from work, I found my wife getting ready, looking as stunning as ever. I was all excited to give her the necklace and the concert tickets, so I went to my work laptop bag where I kept them. But then, I noticed her phone on the table, and it had a notification buzzing. I couldn't resist my curiosity, so I tapped on the message. The text was from an unknown number, and it said, How was today? I miss you so much. When can I see you again? Man, it was such a shock for me, and my chest felt this weird, heavy feeling when I saw that message on her phone. I couldn't help but scroll through their chat, and with every message I read, I got more and more disgusted with my wife. I mean, how could she do this to me? That was the only question running through my mind. The worst part was when she mentioned him needing condoms, and he replied to it with a picture of a pack of condoms in his car, with the caption saying already. It made me wonder if they even used any, but honestly at this point, does it even matter? I didn't want to stay in the house a minute longer. So I grabbed my work bag, which had the concert tickets and the necklace I got her. I needed some space to process what was happening before I confronted her about it. So I hopped in the car and drove straight to the concert. I had spent a lot of money on those VI pickets, so I figured he might as well make use of them. About 15 minutes into the drive, my wife called me, sounding surprised and annoyed at the same time. She asked where I was and what I was up to. Can you believe the audacity she had to ask me that? I was so angry that I told her I was on my way to the show since she already had her fun private show in the afternoon. So there was silence on the other end, but I was too furious to carry on the conversation, so I just hung up. I was still in shock and couldn't believe what I had just discovered. At that moment, I was feeling numb, like I didn't know what to feel. Then she called me back, and it was like she was going through the motions. She started crying and tried to explain that they were just friends and that nothing actually happened between them. But I couldn't take her excuses anymore. I felt like she never respected me or truly loved me the way I loved her. It all just spilled out and I reminded her how I went all out to get her an expensive gift for our special anniversary. She got quiet, and then suddenly she acted like she was crying and asked what I got her. It felt like she was trying to manipulate me into feeling sorry for her and forgiving her. I was done with her lies and drama at that point. I told her to leave me alone and be with whoever she wanted to be with. So, but she insisted that we talk about it like adults and wanted me to come back as if I'm the childish one for having stormed out. I saw through her plan though. She was going to act innocent, make me feel guilty, and then try to seduce me. And honestly, just the thought of it disgusted me. I never thought I'd feel that way about my wife and the idea of being intimate with her. It was all just too much. So I made it to the concert, and when I handed my ticket to the guy at the entrance, he looked at me and said, There's two, meaning he needed to scan the other ticket too. I must have been in a daze or something, because I just stared at him blankly and replied, Yes, there's two, and then walked inside. It was like I was in some weird trance or hypnotized or something. Anyway, the show was incredible. I had a blast and really enjoyed myself. I even ended up making friends with some cool people in my row, and we all had a great time together, singing along to the songs. But I have to admit, some of the lyrics hit me differently that night, considering everything that was going on. During the concert, I felt so alive. I danced and screamed along with the crowd, and it was like a release for all the frustrations I was feeling. The loud rock music drowned out everything else, and it was just what I needed. And when the concert ended, it was still pretty early, and I thought about sitting at the bar and having a drink. But the idea of talking to someone outside of the concert context just felt overwhelming. My mind kept going back to those texts and what I had discovered, and it was hard to shake off those thoughts. So, after the concert, I headed to the hotel where I had made a reservation for my wife and me. But there I was, sleeping alone. When I woke up, my inbox was flooded with about 30 emails from her. It seemed like she had been up all night, going through a roller coaster of emotions. Guilt, shame, and even anger, 
Surprisingly, some of her emails were filled with anger towards me for going through her phone. It was surreal to read those, as if I was the one in the wrong. She pleaded in bargain, leaving voice messages expressing her surprise that I had gotten her an expensive gift, which she found out by going through my emails. She begged me to answer her calls and wanted us to talk things out, hoping we could salvage our anniversary night and make it memorable. That night turned out to be unforgettable, but not in the way I had imagined. It was when I finally saw the true colors of the person I had been married to, even though it took me nearly 12 years to fully realize it. The worst part was when she sent me all the cards I had written for her over the years anniversary cards, birthday cards, Christmas cards. I always poured my heart into those cards, expressing my deep love for her. It was something I had never done for anyone else before. And she used to write such heartfelt cards for me too, although she hadn't done so in years. I think her intention was for me to read those cards and have my heart soften, to remember how much I loved her. She hoped that I would come to my senses, reach out to her, and that we would talk things through, leading to forgiveness and a better future together. But instead, reading those cards made me realize just how little she loved me. It was a painful realization. That night, as heartbreaking as it was, opened my eyes to who my wife truly was, despite us being together for nearly 12 years. I realized that I needed to come to terms with the situation and decide what was best for both of us moving forward. My wife cheated with her co-worker. Now I'm struggling with rage and trying to rebuild my life for my son. So I am a bit lost been about two weeks since I found out. I've been suspicious for a while, lots of red flags but nothing definite. I decided to confront her and her reaction, irrational anger. How can I accuse her of something like that? She would never cheat. Made me sure. I snooped on her phone and computer but couldn't find anything. So I bought some small cameras and placed them around the house. Then I went to visit some friends over the weekend. I grew up in Norway close to the Swedish border. I met my wife in Sweden. I was 20, she was 21, and she had a three-year-old kid when we met. We hit it off and I have been that kid's dad for the last 11 years. I love that guy, I consider him my son. We have been married for six years, not that it matters. Long story short, I went home early when I knew she wouldn't be there and watched the footage. Sure enough there she was doing adult stuff with another guy. I recognized him as a work colleague, Theodore. We were friendly with him and his wife. I used to believe seeing red was a figure of speech, but I was seeing red. I have never been that angry. I am actually a very mellow guy. I never really get angry, but I just lost it. So I hit the walls. I kicked the bedroom door so hard it flew off its hinges and smashed the glass table we had in a living room. I bit the inside of my cheek. I didn't even notice. But when I screamed, I sprayed the wall and floor with blood. At some point, I managed to hit my head pretty hard, and that snapped me out of it. I looked at the carnage, and I knew I just had to get out of there. Had my wife walked in at that point, I think I would be in jail. So in the best case scenario for domestic violence and in the worst case for slaughtering, I quickly packed a suitcase with essentials and my laptop. I work with simulation and modeling and my computer is custom, and I need that to do my job. I sent a copy of the video to Theodore's wife. I didn't really write anything the message apart from your husband is cheating with my wife. I met my son just outside our apartment complex. I gave him a hug, told him I would always love him, but that his mother was cheating on me so I had to leave. I really regret telling him, he shouldn't be burdened with that, but I wasn't really myself at the time and it just came out of me. I went to the border, I wanted to go see my family in a Norway, but they didn't want to let me cross due to COVID. So I've been renting a cheap Airbnb, I'm working but I'm like a zombie, I haven't talked to my wife. The only person I have responded to is my son. He's been asking me questions I've been honest with him as far as possible that I don't know what is going to happen next, apart from divorce. I've been trying to find a good lawyer. I've received hundreds of messages from my wife and her part of the family. I haven't responded to any of it. My parents are the only ones that know in my side as far as I know. I don't want to talk to my friends because they are friends with my wife as well, so I don't really have good support at the moment. So I'm afraid that if I talk to her or see her again, I will lose it and do something I can't take back. I also don't want to lose contact with my son, but I have no idea where to even start. I am still boiling with rage and I don't know how to get past that. I need to respond to my wife at some point, but I'm so angry that I don't think I'm rational. I just wanted to try to write this out and see if that helps. So far, I would say it's made no difference at all. Update one, I'm doing better. I actually visited a cage fighting club. I should really stress that I do not know how to fight at all. I am not really in great shape. The few times that ended up in a fight in my youth, I've had my crap beaten badly. I talked to them and explained the situation. They were actually really friendly and eager to help. First, they made me work out for two hours, and when that didn't take the edge of my anger, they put me in the ring with a very experienced fighter. It was clear he was really gentle with me. 
and even though I did my best, I didn't even give him a workout. It's pretty clear he let me punch and kick him, but he easily blocked whatever I threw at him. So the few times I managed to land a blow with a little bit of force, he was quick to give me a smack back. Since I have no clue what I'm doing, his gentle tap slapped me around hilariously. He would always ask if I was okay before proceeding again. He even apologized a few times for hitting me during our little session when he thought he had maybe hit me to hard. Imagine that apologizing for hitting the opponent in a fight, he clearly didn't see me as an opponent at all. I doubt he would see me as a threat ever. I have a newfound respect for people that know how to fight and I am determined to learn it. These guys were their chillest people I have ever met. I want to be as calm as them. My little fight helped a lot. It really took the edge off. I don't have that burning anger. I am still pissed, but now it's manageable. I will go back for training and more beatings. Still, I don't trust myself to meet my wife. I have talked to my son. I told him that no matter what, we would be okay. I consider him and my son, no matter what happens between his mother and me, appreciated. I think you're really appreciated that. I have talked to a few common friends and her parents. Apparently, my wife has become sort of unglued. She's been calling and talking to everyone at all hours, day and night. She has apparently confessing everything to almost everyone and even offering money to anyone that could put her in touch with me. I was considering only speaking to my wife via lawyer, but I can't afford that, so I've asked my cousin to act as a go-between. I gave her a few questions to put forward so we see where it goes from there. I plan to contact the AP's wife next week as well. Some Redditors strongly suggested that I talk to my wife and tell her that if I can adopt my son, I will consider reconciliation. But I would never do that. I will not use my son as a pawn in anything ever. As things stand now, I would love to adopt him, but only if he asks me to, and only if I am sure it's what he wants, and that he isn't influenced or pressured by anyone. I will get through this, I think. I've received so much good advice on here. I feel like I have a plan now to move forwards with. Update 2 I'm sorry it's been radio silence. I've had my hands full since my last post. I see a lot of questions in my PM messages, so I figured it's easier just to make this update. I started calling my son twice per day after my last post. He would always tell me everything was okay, but I guess it really wasn't. I was focusing on trying to get myself under control. I started going to IC that helped some. But what really changed things is when I went to try boxing. The first place I visited was kind of grimy and rundown. Still the five guys that were there seemed to have this amazing camaraderie going on. And I really wanted in on that. I wanted to belong there badly. They all told me I had to talk to the old man. He was the owner of the place. Apparently he decided who could join or not. They all had a lot of respect for him, so I was kind of apprehensive. Let's just say that the old man has an abrasive personality. To begin with he just listened, but once he started talking I was quickly getting more and more agitated. So there wasn't anything I can really put my finger on. Everything he said was true and maybe that's what angered me. Or maybe it was the tone. Like every question or sentence was an accusation of sorts. The old man made me feel like I was not good enough to become a member of his club and I suddenly found myself in a position of arguing with him for him to let me prove that I was worthy. I still haven't figured out if he is just an idiot or some kind of genius. That said, the old man has really affected my life in a very positive way, even though he is very uncomfortable to be around. I am starting to see why people have such respect and admiration for him. The old man has helped me understand why I was so angry and how to think more clearly moving forward. It's a story in itself, but this is already getting long, so back to the main issue. A few days after my post, about 20 minutes after I had talked to my son, he called me back. He was crying and he apologized for lying to me. He lied when he said everything was okay at home. He went on to tell me that my wife was just sitting in front of the TV, staring at it, even if he turned it off. He didn't have any food to eat, the house smells, and the only thing he had eaten in the last two days was some sandwiches a friend's mother had made for him when he visited. So of course I immediately rushed home. I could smell the rotten garbage in the hallway even before I got in the door. The house was an absolute filthy mess. It clearly hadn't been cleaned since I left almost a month ago. The floor wore covered in crumpled up sheets of paper, overflowing dirty dishes in the sink, broken glass on the floor. Rotten garbage smell, absolutely disgusting. I went to check on my son first. I had picked up a burger for him on the way over. I asked him to stay in this room and eat while I go and talk to his mum. I assured him everything would be okay. I was home. I was going to take care of him. He cried and hugged me for a bit before I went to check on his mother. That hug felt so good. I had missed him so much. I am never leaving him again. My wife sat staring at the screen like my son had described it to me. What he didn't tell me was how terrible she looked. She had lost a terrifying amount of weight. 
She was just skin and bones. Her eyes were sunk into her head, dark rings, lifeless skin, cracked lips, messy, dirty hair, filthy clothes. I grabbed a chair and set myself down between her and the TV. The smell coming off her was absolutely terrible. There was a bucket on the floor. Later found out it was half full of a weak old vomit. I felt a deep pain for her. I wanted to protect her, help her, make her better. For a while I completely forgot what she had done. Seeing her like this was really painful for me. I guess in some ways I still love and care for her, despite what she has done. That fact kind of terrifies me. Something is wrong with me, do I think? I didn't know what to say to her, to be honest. She was clearly not all there. She actually asked me if I was real. When I said yes, she broke down crying in a way I've never seen anyone cry before. Her crying or wailing is probably a better word was so loud it sort of startled me. Without warning, mid-scream she either fell asleep or passed out. I put my Fitbit on her arm because I don't really know how to take someone's pulse. Her heart rate was varied up and down between 100 to 150, so I figured that's probably not good. I made sure she was in a comfortable position on the sofa and I wiped the snot of her face before I ran and asked our neighbor for help. They were happy to look after our son while I took her to the hospital. She has been there for seven days now, I think. I'm a bit blurry on the days, to be honest. I have visited once, but she got so upset from seeing me that the doctors recommended that I don't visit for now. They have no diagnosis for her yet, and they have no idea of when or even if she will come out of it. I have been focusing on taking care of my son since I have made sure he is regular I see, and he looks like he is doing better now. There is no doubt he has been traumatized by this. I am drowning in guilt for my part in causing him this pain. I have been in contact with a lawyer to try to get custody rights for obvious reasons. I don't know how that will work out. I have also prepared for divorce, but I am holding off for the time being. It took us several days to clean the house. I decontaminate the fridge with bleach, and still it smelled like rotten food, so I actually had to get a new one. I also found that my wife had taken all my dirty laundry into bed and made a body shape of it. It had some additions to make it look anatomically correct and it's kind of disturbing to be honest. I look through all her papers that she left all over the house. It's incoherent nonsense for the most part. Some pages has dates and times. I can't understand most of it apart from some pages that have long lines of sorry written on it. Most pages with text just transition into a wiggly line in the middle of a sentence. I don't know what to do. My anger is completely gone, replaced by sadness of the situation and for the trauma and pain inflicted on my son. I feel bad for my wife, but I also understand why I was angry and how I have changed to deal with the pain. I have left a hug piece of myself behind and she caused that. I don't know if I have it in me to forgive that. A big part of my personality was being a good husband and provider for a long time. That part of me was mortally wounded by her affair. I left that part of me behind. It was just a painful to keep. It's too early to say anything about where we end up as for now all avenues are open. I am still hurting and confused. I will just continue to try to rebuild my self-esteem and my self-image of my masculinity. If my wife comes out of it, I will talk to her and see where I go from there. Right now, I need to focus on my son. I need to make sure he is okay. Sorry, it's not anything spectacular like the other stories I have read on here with principled confrontations and epic revenge. I am exhausted and sad. I don't know what to do. It was all so clear-cut in my mind before I came back. Now I just can't see any good ways forwards. Update 3 I have some questions. Maybe you can help me shine some light on this from different angles. If you're going to post in comments just divorce to tramp, don't bother. I will simply ignore you. I know that in the end whatever happens is my choice, so I will choose what is right for me and my family whatever I decide that to be in the future. I haven't been sleeping much and I am a bit dazed so if I ramble a bit please bear with me. I really appreciate all the different perspectives you give. It really helps me think things through. The wife is still in the hospital. She is refusing to allow anyone to see her apart from her mother. The only instructions she has given, apart from no visitors, is that no one is to talk to me on her behalf or try to pressure me in any way. She has confessed cheating to just about everybody but not in any detail. Her calls have been panicked along the line of, I cheated. He is going to leave me. What do I do? So people have been pretty much leaving me alone, unless I have called them to ask for their help or opinion. My wife has written me a letter her mother handed over to me a few days ago. It is long, 32 pages. I will try to summarize the main points here. She apologized for what she's done to me, her son, and us. She says she will sign any paper I put in front of her. No questions asked. Post, snub, divorce, papers, whatever. She also confesses to a two-month emotional affair with another man online before the current affair started that turned physical. I didn't know about this at all, so I believe she is being honest. 
Her confession is very detailed, and she has given me all her login credentials to everything to confirm that she is honest and not hiding anything. She freely admits that she was captivated by the attention and the excitement, but she seems genuinely confused that she allowed any of this to actually transpire. I believe what she has written is the truth. Emails, messages, call logs, etc. Backs her story up and she has also pointed me to a thumb drive hidden in one of her drawers that contained a diary going back almost 10 years. Her diary and her letter seems to be in perfect sync from what I have read so far. She explains that the first emotional affair online was more of a game than anything else. Flirting only. No digital flirting or meetup. It went on until suddenly one day she felt compelled to send this guy a message. She immediately ended it then. She couldn't find the courage to tell me, but according to the diary she was trying. When the main affair started she was flattered and given a, a huge ego boost from this guy, giving her attention. He is a very handsome guy, model type, and I have met his wife and she is absolutely stunning. Ten tenths jaw droppingly beautiful. My wife's ego rush got addictive it seems. Getting attention from this beautiful guy that was married to such a beautiful woman gave her a huge boost. She felt like she must be very special to outcompete his beautiful wife for attention. She admits she knew what she was doing was wrong, but she also seems genuinely confused that she was unable to stop herself. She hates herself for losing control. If I understand this correctly, the affair only turned physical once the AP started to lose interest in her. She started using segs to keep him interested to keep him giving her attention. From the diary, the segs seem to be more of a chore for her. She doesn't seem to enjoy it. She does it just to get more attention, like it's a prize she gives him for that. It's clear she is struggling with guilt, especially in the beginning. But she soon starts to compartmentalize this. But of course we drifted apart and our relationship suffers while she does this. The affair was physical for four weeks and they kissed and fooled around with intercourse five times according to her diary and her confession. This is backed up with her location data and credit card bills for hotels etc. The rest is history that you already know. Her letter concludes with the following. I don't know who the person was that had the affair or at least I don't recognize myself doing it. I don't understand how I could so easily abandon my beliefs and my morals and hurt the people in my life that I love more than anything. I don't know why I wasn't able to stop myself. I will not insult you by asking you to understand or forgive me because I don't deserve understanding or forgiveness. My only hope is that I can be helpful in some way to help you and our son heal. I will do anything you ask of me without question. I will do anything if you think it might help in any way, no matter how big or small. I will live with my mother once I am released from here. I will stay away unless you ask for me. I don't want to remind you with my presence of the pain I have caused both of you. I don't have the words to tell you how sorry I am for what I did and my greatest wish is that you heal and find someone worthy of your love that you can be happy with. I pray I haven't permanently destroyed your ability to trust and love someone deserving in the future. I will not be with anyone else because I'm clearly not safe to be with. I will seek therapy to try to find and perhaps one day cure what is wrong with me. But as of today I don't really know who I am or why I couldn't stop myself from doing these things. I knew what I did was wrong, that I was hurting everyone myself included, but I did it anyway. I was selfish, I caused all of this just so I could feel a little better about myself for a brief moment. Once I saw the pain on your face on the camera you left behind in the bedroom, the heartbreaking pain on your face, while you were watching the tape with me, and the other man. At that moment I realized how delusional I am and how terrible and evil I had become. I am afraid there is no salvation for me. I will always love you. I wish I could undo it all, take it all back. But I can't, I'm sorry. I ugly cried reading it, and I really don't know what to do. I've been up all night reading, and I am emotionally drained, confused, and unsure of everything. I watched the video again, and I also watched the video of me going insane, I don't remember a lot of what happened that is on the video. It is very painful to watch my wife's actions, but I have been looking at it over and over again. Why can't I stop looking at it? It is also very disturbing to watch myself go crazy, and I can't stop doing that either. I keep going back and watching it from start to the end over and over again. I try to put it away, but an hour or so later I find myself back watching it all over again. It's hurting me, so I don't understand why I do it. Also is what she's saying even possible, that a person can be pulled into an affair where behavior becomes compulsive like she describes it, where it's not really a free choice anymore. Maybe a WWW I'm on here could share some insight. So I also clearly see from her diaries that she probably developed a depression about three years ago after her favorite aunt died. Her perspective on life becomes very dark after this, almost hopeless I would say. I've read other stories where depression seems to cause drastic personality changes and be triggers for affairs. Any insight would be appreciated on this.
She clearly never loved any of these men. She loved the ego boost, the increased self-esteem, the rush she felt from them seemingly telling her the right things. So on D-Day, she totally cut her AP out of her life and called his wife and told her about the affair. So I know this because the AP's wife told me when I met her. She actually asked me if we could have a revenge affair. She was very focused on this, getting revenge, like that would help anything. But beauty aside, she is probably the most annoying woman I've ever met. Talking to her was like nails on a chalkboard. Needless to say, we will not be having an affair, and we will never ever meet in person again. I don't know what to do now, I can't sleep, I can't really think, so I could really use some help. Update 4 I am very grateful to everybody on this forum. I have received a lot of help to better navigate this disaster. I am okay now. I feel I am back in control of things. I've been trying to get to see my wife. She refuses still and her mother still acts as a go-between. I tried to call her out on her promise in her letter to me. That she would do anything. If I thought it would help in any way. So her mother relayed the message that I believed as talking would help. I also asked her to see her doctor together to try to help me understand. The doctor will not tell me anything without her present. I will try to be patient. In summary, I have been diagnosed with PTSD, and my wife has been diagnosed with persistent depression and some bipolar disorder. She has a chemical imbalance in her brain, and they are trying out different medications for her. Many of you were right. Her condition made her vulnerable. Then a predator crossed her path, and here we are. Her AP has been cheating consistently on his wife for their entire relationship with multiple women, in parallel most of the time. They are divorcing. The AP has been beaten up a bit. Not badly from what I have heard. AP's wife called the husbands of most of the women he has had affairs with. I have a friend staying with me most days. He keeps me focused. And I am going camping with my son this weekend. I was trying to confirm if the descriptions in her diary were correct, that she considered the segs as a chore. And watching her disconnected behavior and facial expressions in the video, she is basically just waiting for it to be over. I have not decided what to do but I have deleted the video of her and of me going crazy. It was just causing me pain, and I just couldn't put it away. One part of me is screaming at me to just walk away, to run, and find someone else. What if she cheats again? How can I trust her? Can I get rid of the movie running on a loop in my mind? Will I divorce her in X years because I can't get past this? Eck, I struggle a lot with these types of questions, but divorce would definitely mean that I lose some daily contact with my son, and there is no doubt that he needs me at least for now. He is terrified of being abandoned, not that strange considering recent events. I think if I leave his mother now it would make things worse for him. If I can leave her like she is now, what's preventing me from leaving him? He will probably look at it like that. The two of us have started going to the boxing gym together, and we are bonded stronger than ever. Being there for my son is giving me tremendous strength and motivation to face this with an open mind. He is leaning heavily on me at the moment, so even if I decided to divorce, I'm not sure if I could actually go through with it in the short term. He has begged me not to leave him again. The two weeks I was away was very traumatizing for him, and I'm not exposing him to that again. There is no telling how long it will take for his mother to stabilize enough to be a good parent for him again. If I divorce now, maybe she'd never recover. Even if I divorce her, I will still have the pain. I will still have the scars. I will bring that into any new relationship. I think that would greatly reduce the chances of such relationships being successful. Isn't it just as well that I am with her while I try to heal? At least she will know why I am acting like this, and understand why I'm struggling. If I leave her, what is really waiting for me out there? Single women my age seem to be either divorced for good reasons, or they are so ravaged by baby rabies they will they are not really considering if the person they choose is a good long-time partner for them. They seem very willing to play a role, just to get into a relationship. That cannot last long term, I think. It seems to me there is a high risk of a string of relationships that are doomed to begin with because one party is desperate and I am broken. Dating strangers and random hookups doesn't really appeal to me. Also, how long would it take me to find someone that understands me as well as my wife? She is the only person in my entire life that I felt she actually really gets me. And it took a long time to get to that point. Isn't that something I could use in my own healing? Would I ever be able to find someone again that could do that? How long would that take? There is no guarantee that a new partner wouldn't cheat as well. Given the circumstances, I actually think that the odds of my wife cheating again are lower than a new partner. My son also needs his mother, and she needs to heal before she can step back into that role. Will she heal faster and better if I divorce her? So or will she heal better if we try to reconcile? I don't effing know. It's driving me nuts. How can I know she is safe to be around for my son if I'm not there with them? When it comes to my own healing, would I be better off alone or with her? 
Based upon what I have learned here, it seems those that choose that jump to divorce don't heal very well. It looks like the best outcome as far as healing is concerned is when the wayward actively contributes to the healing over a three to five year time period minimum. I don't know if she is even capable of that at the moment, to be honest. So here I am. I am terribly conflicted. I have a million questions in my head and basically zero answers. So I still struggle with the two extremes, reconciliation or divorce and everything in between. I can't deny that I still love my wife. It turns out my bond to her isn't that easily broken. I really, really don't want to love her. The prideful side of me wants me to hate her. But I just can't lie to myself. I still love her deeply. And even though I fantasized about her getting hurt as badly as me the first few weeks, I don't want to hurt her or anyone. It wouldn't help me at all. Either way, I see long, painful road ahead of us. I hope I have the strength to stay the course and be patient enough to make sure I make the right choices for my family and me. The only thing I have been able to decide is that if I land on offering R, it will not just be given. I will need to see some effort. I will not offer R until I'm absolutely sure we are two people 100% committed to that path. Also, if we do R, she will basically be a prisoner on probation. I don't want to be that guy, but what choice do I have? If I feel I can't trust her. Either way, we will need a lot of therapy. Maybe she doesn't even want to R. I just don't know. Not being able to talk to her is starting to become a real burden for me. It's stressing me out. My brother tried to ruin my life for years. Now I'm cutting him off to protect my family. My name is Adam and I'm 20 years old. My brother John is 21, just a year older than me. Growing up, John constantly told me he was jealous of me and disliked me. It made me very sad because he was my only sibling and I loved and admired him a lot. I always looked up to him and tried to be close but he pushed me away. When he was happy he was a great brother of DJ Fun and Creative. However, whenever we argued, he would say really mean things and try to harm me by punching, pushing, or pulling my hair. Our parents would scold him but it never changed anything. John had an outgoing personality and a strong passion for the arts. He excelled in painting and fashion, loved experimenting with his hair, and enjoyed getting tattoos. Our father started me early in school and eventually, John and I ended up in the same grade because of my advanced academic abilities. Fortunately, we weren't placed in the same class. John saw me as his competition because I was more academically inclined. He disliked doing homework which made my average grades seem stellar in comparison. I consistently earned a mix of B's and A's while John typically got C's and B's. His strengths lay in art, drama, cooking, sewing, and dance. As I grew up, I fell in love with the violin, a passion my father encouraged. I also dabbled in learning French and Korean. John was part of the drama department at school and spent most of his evenings practicing for plays. Things took a turn for him when he got kicked off the drama team due to a fight with fellow students. The drama unfolded when John discovered his girlfriend cheating on him with another guy from their department. In response, John beat up the guy and set his bag on fire. This incident led to John being asked to leave the school. Our parents talked to the principal and compensated the guy, but John still had to repeat the 11th grade. Our parents were very disappointed and grounded him until he turned 18. The longest romantic relationship I've had lasted only six months, and it was all because of John. Abika. I wasn't on a mission to find the one, but every time I had a decent relationship, John would try to jeopardize it. Chan. Once, I really liked a girl named Emily. We had been together for four months, and things were getting serious. We were on the verge of meeting each other's parents when, out of the blue, the night before, she blocked me on every platform VJ phone, message, and social media. The only way to communicate was face to face, so I ended up showing up uninvited at her house to talk. When I arrived at Emily's house, she seemed surprised to see me. I confronted her about being blocked and asked what had happened. Emily hesitated before admitting that John had reached out to her, expressing concerns and sharing stories about my alleged past that portrayed me in a negative light. He revealed that my brother had told him about how I had been talking to other girls throughout the time we had been dating, and that he found me sending inappropriate pictures to one of my female friends. I was mortified when I heard this. I tried to explain my side of the story, refuting the claims my brother had made, but Emily seemed uncertain and confused. She questioned why my own brother would lie about me and make up something so serious. I felt like crying as I explained to her how my brother had always been jealous of me and would try to mess up my relationships. 
I had no idea he could go so far as to make up such lies about me. The damage was done, and despite my efforts to salvage the relationship, Emily expressed doubts about continuing, since she didn't want to be involved with someone who had a troublesome brother like John. I understood where she was coming from since, if I had a choice. I would not be related to him either. Heartbroken and frustrated, I confronted John about his actions. After a lot of yelling, John finally admitted to feeling insecure and jealous that I always dated attractive girls. He told me that it was always easy for me to find girlfriends, and he hated me for it. He asserted that he thought I was too good for Emily, so he made up all those lies to drive her away from me. I was so pissed at him, and it became very clear to me that his actions were driven by his evolved, unresolved issues of jealousy. Our parents reprimanded him and told him how wrong this was, but John didn't seem to care because in the end, he got what he wanted. Jay, Emily, and I were broken up. This incident served as a turning point in my life, prompting me to start thinking about moving away from John. It was a stark realization that if I ever wanted to have a healthy and lasting romantic connection, I could not have him near me. We both shared a dream of studying abroad. John did have immense potential, but it seemed like fear or a lack of personal research led him to pursue computer science in our home country, following our dad's advice. Witnessing that, I realized I didn't want my parents influencing my future choices. I worked tirelessly to secure a scholarship to study abroad. However, despite my efforts, financial constraints prevented me from going, so I compromised and started university in our country majoring in what I wanted. However, after eight months, my determination to go abroad persisted, and I kept searching for opportunities. Eventually, I secured a scholarship and could finally head overseas to restart my studies. My parents were really sad that I was moving away. On my last night at home, John apologized to me for all the things he had done to me since our childhood. I don't know what prompted him to do so, VJ. Maybe it was the fact that I was moving so far away, and he could have our parents to himself now. I didn't want to pursue any drama any longer, so I forgave him. During my solo adventure studying abroad, I underwent a significant transformation. I shed some weight, met new people, discovered my personal style, and gained newfound confidence. Graduating was a major milestone, but the year that followed was tough as I struggled to secure a job. Eventually I found a good job and settled down. Meanwhile, John finished his bachelor's in our home country. He told me how he wanted to come and study in the country I lived in for his master's so I encouraged him. He started applying to different universities for scholarships, but his applications kept getting rejected. He started growing frustrated. Once, he came to visit me and stayed with me for seven days so I could show him around. He could see that I had changed, and whenever he made any sly remarks about my clothes or my hair, I didn't let it bother me. I found it very weird how John would try to control what I was going to wear or how I needed to behave in public if he and I went out for lunch. If I had some friends over, he would tell me how he didn't like them and how I needed to find better people to hang out with. There have been instances when I would be enjoying myself with my friends, and suddenly he would get weird without any apparent reason. When I took him to work and showed him where I was working, he was surprised to see how huge my office was. I excitedly told him how I'd been presented with opportunities for new experiences in the field I was working in, but then he just went quiet and didn't even seem happy for me. Instead, he shifted the conversation to himself, expressing how he would love the same opportunities and regretting some of his past choices. Later, when we were having dinner, he told me how he wanted to extend his vacation and continue to live with me, but I knew that I could not live with his judgment. I politely told him that it was better for him to find new accommodations if he wanted to stay any longer, because clearly he had some issues with me and refused to talk to me about it. This is when John lost his mind. He started yelling at me about how he was sick and tired of having me in his life when all everybody does is compare me to him, and how his achievements in life are never enough. I pointed out to him that I never treated him this way, and it was he who always made me feel inferior. John then told me how I was not anything special and that he could have done the same things as me if he had the same opportunities. I told him that we did have the same opportunities growing up, and that I decided to apply for universities here and worked my ass off to secure a scholarship while he was failing to secure one and was somehow blaming me for his choices. Zep pissed him off, and he told me that I was just a spoiled brat and that he wished I was never born. Those words hit me so hard that I just got up from the table and locked myself in my room. Three days later, when he flew back without ever apologizing to me, I could finally breathe in peace. I realized just how much he and I had changed over the years, and I had started to dislike his presence a little by now. Eventually, I met my girlfriend, Jessica, who worked in the same industry as me. Our paths crossed all the time, 
We had mutual friends, and during a gathering we met and had a couple of drinks. So it was super fun to talk to someone who understood my line of work, and I thought we would just be friends. Turns out she liked me and asked me out the next day. We started dating and were together for five years before she proposed to me. I'm close to her family since they live in the same country, and she has met my parents through video calls. We had been planning for our wedding when I received a job offer that would pay me double what I was earning in my current company. The only catch was that the new company was based in my home country. I discussed this with my fiancé GCE, and she and I both agreed that this was a life-changing opportunity, and I took the job. This is how I shifted back to my home country, and my family finally met my fiancé GCE. My parents really adore Jessica, and my dad spends his Sundays now golfing with her. My new job was going well, and Jessica eventually found a new also. During this time, John avoided me like the plague. He refused to meet me or Jessica even though my parents would insist. He would make up random excuses not to meet us. He and I had not talked for a very long time, so I understood his hesitation, and honestly I did not mind. I was afraid that he might try to jeopardize my relationship with Jessica, just like he had done with my previous relationships. All my previous relationships Jessica and I decided to get married after a few months of settling down in my home country. We booked plane tickets for her parents and grandparents so they could be there for us. We wanted to have a small and intimate wedding with only family and really close friends and a short honeymoon as we both are really busy with work during this time. We chose to have our wedding in the huge backyard of my parents' house, and they were extremely happy about this. Our grandparents, parents, siblings, and friends all made speeches, and we were showered with love and blessings. The only person who was missing was John. He had apparently come down with a fever, or so he told us, which is why he could not attend. The food was awesome, and everybody danced till midnight. We all had a great time, and then Jessica and I flew for our honeymoon. A week later we returned from our honeymoon, and I was at my mother's place showing her some photos from my wedding when John showed up. As I was talking to mom about how happy our grandparents were during my wedding, John interjected, asking if Jessica and I were having any financial troubles. I laughed and told him how I had a much higher paying job now than before and how Jessica was doing well also. He then mocked me by saying that maybe that was not the case since I had decided decided to get married in our parents' backyard. My mother came to my defense and told John that there was nothing wrong with getting married in her backyard and that I wanted to have a smaller wedding so it made sense for me. I agreed and told John that I was thankful for his concern, but Jessica and I did not like extravagant things despite our high income since we believed in using our money wisely. John got really angry hearing this and told me that I was just trying to show off as usual and that I was probably lying about my salary. I shook my head and told him that I didn't need to show off in front of him and that we were not children anymore. He needed to grow up and not make up assumptions or lies about me. I reiterated that this is why I was glad that he did not come to my wedding. This pissed him off and he walked out crying. My mother did try to de-escalate the situation, but John didn't listen. Later he told our grandparents and some of our cousins about how I was glad he did not come to my wedding and more things from our fight. I did send him a text to apologize but he didn't bother replying. Over the years I have tried to stay out of his way as much as I can, although we did have a few good moments. Also Jessica met him and she immediately took a dislike to him. This was because John would constantly make fun of her. For example, Jessica and I both like watching Disney movies, which John considers boring, and he says that Jessica might not be womanly enough. I took a lot of offense when he said this, and later he apologized to both of us. John has also apparently expressed to my mother on several occasions that he thinks Jessica is trying to control my life. Oh. When my mother confronted him about it, he told her how whenever he met Jessica, he just had a bad feeling about her. One day, when my mother and John had come over for lunch at my place, John was telling us about how he was facing issues with his girlfriend, Emily. Apparently, Emily had moved in with John but had lost her job after three months. Since then, she wasn't working, nor was she paying any bills around the house. I told John firmly that he needed to kick Emily out of the house since she was clearly not contributing anything to their household. Then John suddenly pointed out how I earned more than Jessica. So does this mean I should kick her out? I pointed out that while it was true that I earned more than Jessica, she earned quite well on her own and we were both bringing in the cash flow to our household. She was not sitting around the house all day eating chips and playing games. My mother agreed and told John how Jessica had sacrificed her own career just so I could take up this high-paying job here. John took offense to that and started saying how men should always be the ones earning more. 
and how it was weird that Jessica was okay with this arrangement. I told him that not every person has a weak, fragile ego like all the people he has dated, and that Jessica loved me for who I am. John, of course, never listened and later got married to Emily despite her being jobless. Emily also had a bit of a temper, which we all witnessed during their wedding, when she got too drunk and started to pick a random fight with a waiter. John and some of her brothers had to restrain her. It was very embarrassing and I was a bit scared for John, but I knew he would never listen to me so I kept my mouth shut. Yup tam the um, anul me. Over time I have noticed John and Emily's fights have only increased because every time they fight, Emily kicks him out of their home, so he has to come over and sleep at our parents' place. Place. My parents are also concerned about him, but John refuses to talk to them. One day we heard from Emily's mother that John had apparently cheated on Emily with one of his co-workers. They had a huge fight and in the end, decided to work through their marriage. They had even started going for couple counseling. This year I found out that Jessica and I are expecting a baby. We are over the moon. My parents congratulated us and told me how proud they were to become grandparents soon. They assured me that they would be there for me every step of the way. Once John learned we were expecting, he asked Jessica and me about names we liked and whether we wanted his help. Jessica and I had discussed a few names, but I did not want to share them with him because I knew how judgmental he could be. So I said a very firm no and told him no name would be shared until the baby was born and the name was official. John suggested very strongly that this would be a terrible idea, saying that we should discuss the names with other family members so we could give the best name to our baby. I told him we did not want people interacting or interfering in the name choice since this was our baby and we were going to name it whatever we wanted. Later, when it came to the baby shower, I asked my mother to arrange everything. I trusted my mother's judgment and besides, I hated planning. I had also asked my mother to inform everyone not to give me any gifts since we still didn't know the gender of the baby. So I just wanted to have a good time with my friends since it had been such a long time and learn tips about parenthood. On the day of the baby shower, I was pleasantly surprised to see that my mother had invited just my close friends, which is exactly what I wanted, and there were non-alcoholic drinks for everyone. So I was having a great time catching up with my friends when John showed up wearing a shirt that said, Godfather to be. My eyes widened in shock as there was no way in hell that I was ever going to make him my baby's godfather. Um, it was a bit awkward as John kept telling everyone how he wanted to be a godfather. What was frustrating was that he never even discussed this with me. As the day unfolded, my mother invited Jessica, my father and Emily to join us later in the afternoon since we were going to find out the gender of the baby. As Jessica and I cut the cake together, we were shocked to find out that we were having a baby boy. Tears rolled down my eyes as my friends came and hugged me. However, John suddenly got up to announce that he had something very important to say. Everyone stopped talking and looked at him curiously. He looked very solemn as he took out a document and held it up in front of everyone. He then announced that a few days ago I had apparently gone for a paternity test and found out that Jessica was not the mother of my baby. He dramatically declared that the test results indicated a different mother for the baby. The room fell silent and my fiancée, C.C. Sika, was visibly disturbed. She turned to look at me as I stood there in shock. Jessica asked me what was happening, and if what John was saying was true. I shook my head and looked at John to explain himself. My mother, without a doubt in her mind, asked John what the hell he was up to and why he was even making up such ridiculous things. She snatched the document from John's hand and pointed out how the mother's name didn't even have my name on it. This is when John started to laugh. My friends looked at me in bewilderment. With a smug expression, he revealed that he had downloaded a fake paternity test from the internet and came up with this plan to prove a point. He claimed that he wanted to expose Jessica for who she was and how she was definitely abusive towards me. The entire room was in shock and disbelief. I asked John if he was right in his head because my fiancé, G.C., had never even never eased her voice at me, let alone been abusive. He started to say how there was no way that a woman could be happy letting her partner earn more than her, and how he had suspected for a long time that she was extremely controlling. He went on to give random examples and then concluded by pointing out how Jessica got angry when he first announced the paternity test. I yelled at him that the reason Jessica got pissed was because he publicly humiliated me by announcing that our child didn't belong to her. I told him how my fiancé had never abused me or locked me out of our house, and that he seemed to be projecting. I watched John's face get red with embarrassment. I continued to tell him how I was so sick of him, always being jealous of me, all my life, and how disgusting it was for him to turn my baby shower into such a fiasco. I announced to everyone that John had always done this, 
and recounted how he would lie about me to my ex-girlfriends. John stood there looking humiliated. My mother told him how he had gone too far this time. Out of nowhere, his wife Emily, who had remained silent until then, stood up in the midst of the awkward silence and walked up to John. To everyone's shock, she handed him some papers. The atmosphere shifted from discomfort to utter chaos as John started to question her about what this was. Emily told him how the marriage counseling was clearly not working for them, and she had come to realize that they were toxic for each other. She told John that she had been contemplating divorce and wanted to give him these documents tonight. But since he liked making a scene, she could not bear to go back home with him. She told him that she was done with him and his drama and walked out of the baby shower. The room fell into an uneasy silence as Emily's revelation hung in the air. Guests exchanged awkward glances, uncertain of how to respond to the unexpected turn of events. John stood there stunned and speechless, holding the divorce papers in his hands. John's attempt to overshadow the baby shower with his antics had backfired in the most unforeseen way. Instead of having the last laugh, he found himself facing the unraveling of his own marriage. The once celebratory atmosphere now carried a heavy tension, and the joyous occasion had turned into a somber affair as the reality of the situation sunk in. I decided that I was done with all this. I asked Jessica to escort me out of the event, and she readily agreed. I hugged my mother goodbye, and she assured me that she would call me later to check up on me. John tried to come up to me and apologize, but I didn't even bother glancing at him. Since then, my head has been reeling. As you can imagine, everyone is quite shocked about what has happened. I've been getting calls from people checking up on me. Some of them have informed me about how John burst out crying once I left the venue and my parents kicked him out without listening to him. I feel pity for him since he has now lost me, my parents, and also his wife. I feel a bit bad about how I shouted at him even though, at that moment, I felt like it was justified. So was I in the wrong for exposing his jealousy in front of everyone after he tried to come up with a fake paternity test? Update 1 Firstly I want to thank each and every one of you who took the time to read and respond to my story. The outpouring of empathy, advice, and shared experiences over the past week has been overwhelming. I am genuinely touched by the sense of community that Reddit has provided me during such a tough time. I've never posted on Reddit before, but because of what happened with my brother, I thought I needed some outside perspective. It's true that what my brother did is extremely bizarre and vile, which is why I agree with some of your comments that he might require professional help. I also need to have a talk with my parents and cut him off permanently. I can't have him behaving this way around my baby. Update 2 Hi everyone. It's been a month since I last updated. I did talk to my parents about my brother, and they agree that it is the right decision for all of us to sever ties with him. John shows no remorse and has now gone around telling people about how I made a huge deal out of his prank and brought up his past in front of his wife, which prompted her to divorce him. Emily has since talked with my parents and apologized to us for how she treated John in the past. She has told us that the reason she would kick John out of their place was not because she was abusing him, but because whenever they had fights, he would punch her and kick her in the face which would make her feel unsafe around him. This was very shocking for us to hear because I always thought that Emily was the one at fault, but then she showed us pictures of her broken nose and black eye. It's lucky that Emily loved him enough not to go to the police. Otherwise, John would have ended up in jail by now. Clearly, they had a toxic relationship and I'm kind of glad that they are getting a divorce. So my parents have talked with John and told him firmly that he is no longer welcome at their place or mine. John started with his waterworks. But my mom was so pissed after what he had pulled at my baby shower that she just went off on him and told him that the next time he ever came near me or my baby, they would get a restraining order against him. So they told him firmly that he needed to talk to a psychiatrist because something was clearly not right in his head. John has refused to seek help and told my parents that they were being unfair by favoring me more than him. Anyway, I have blocked him from everywhere and so has Jessica. We have installed security cameras at our house, so if he ever comes to my place, I will involve the police. Update 3 It's been 8 months since my last update. I am happy to write that I gave birth to my baby boy recently. The pregnancy was tough, but I am so glad that our child is here. We have named him Alex. I can't believe that I am finally a parent. Our home is now adorned with the laughter and cries of our little one. Jessica and I are adjusting to the new role of being parents, and despite the challenges, we are relishing every moment with our little one. My parents have been there for us every day as I get used to becoming a parent. Jessica's parents are flying in to see us next month. John has not disturbed us even once. The last I heard, he and Emily got a divorce, and he decided to pack up his things and move to a different city, perhaps to start afresh. I do feel sad that my brother cannot be a part of my celebration, but as a parent, 
I have to protect my little one. 